In this video, I'm going to demonstrate Jupyter Ace emulator running on a Raspberry Pi Pico. So I've got my Raspberry Pi Pico down here and it's got a USB keyboard plugged in and also a VGA monitor. Now I've got my terminal emulation software running on the, on the actual Pico at the minute, but on shortcuts here, because I've got enough memory, I've put all my emulators in the same application. So if I press Shift F4, it takes me into the into the Jupyter Ace emulator, and I've got a cursor up here for the Jupyter Ace. And I can type vlist to give me a list of the fourth words which are defined by default in, in the actual Jupyter Ace. And you can define your own words. They're like uh, function names. So if I define one for displaying a character set, uh, and you program fourth in a different way to what you would normally do on the 80s computer, which is basic. Uh, in four, if you push things onto a stack, so I'm pushing two numbers onto the stack, two, five, six, and zero. And if I enter do loop, what it's gonna do is go iterate from zero to two, five, five. Uh, and the next line, if I type I emit, the I is implied as a, the variable name for the iterator through the loop, and emit just outputs character of the ASCII value of i, and then I end the loop by typing loop, and then a semicolon ends the definition for that function or word. And if I type vlist, it actually shows the character set definition that I've just defined at the top there. So if I now type char set, it then dis displays all the characters in that character set. And what I can also do in my emulator is I can actually load data from a text file. So the, another one example I've got from the manual of the Jupyter Ace is to define, redefine a character graphic. So that's just running there now, it's automatically typing stuff in from the text file, which I just gave it. I'll go through how I've updated this, uh, my emulator to actually run on the Raspberry Pi Pico just after I show this demonstration. It's just redefining the, the graphics and it will actually show on up here as soon as it runs the redefined graphic. And it also actually displays it on the display at the bottom as well. So there's the graphics redefined and it's automatically showing up there as well. So if I type character set again. So there's the normal version of the character and then there's the inverted version of the character. So I'll go through the changes that I've made in my emulator code in order to get to run on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So in a previous video, if you go back from my video list, you'll see the Jupyter Ace when I made it run on Linux on the Raspberry Pi. And uh, so I won't go through all the code as I went through in that, that video. I'll just, just go through the differences, which is basically where I've got conditional code placed in these kind of def define areas. So I'm going to be using the second core on the Raspberry Pi Pico because on the Raspberry Pi itself, this, the normal computer, it's, it, each core runs at about a gigahertz, whereas on the Raspberry Pi Pico, they're only running at 125 megahertz. So I have to actually use the second core in order to keep performance up. And uh, so I also have a watchdog running, so I need to make sure that I keep the watchdog on the Pico alerted. So all of this stuff uh, should be pretty much the same as the code that you would see in my previous video. I may have made a few changes for performance and stuff, but where I've got these conditional elements in, so is what's running on the Pico. So I'm setting the, on the Raspberry Pi itself, like I say, it runs at a, a gigahertz of roughly the uh, the core. So I actually, in the Z80 part of it, I actually have a sleep statement so that it just sleeps for a period of time because the Raspberry Pi is a lot quicker than it needs to be to run this emulator. So but on the Raspberry Pi Pico, I set the delay to zero. Uh, so the actual standard core is just running at full, full whack all the time. And like I say, I've got uh, the multi-core as well. So I'm running the display stuff on the second core uh, and I this is the function which you'll see at the bottom of this code where I actually run the display stuff and 
So this is where I would start my emulator. And then after, if someone quits the emulator, it basically just tells the second core to stop doing what it's doing. If it ever exits from that. So all of this stuff is pretty much the same. This is just where I do file handling stuff on the ports and reading keyboards on the on the port for the Z80. It's only really when I get down the bottom here. There's not that much code to the to actually emulate Sinclair and Jupyter Ace computers. So this is why I have my clock callback. So every clock cycle the Z80 gives uh, calls back this function so that I can decide what to do on each clock cycle. So here, this is where I'm deciding to tell, to send a message to the second core to say display, update the display. Whereas normally I do just do, do it on the same core. Uh, I display the stuff on the same core. So the, the main difference is really just updating the display on the second core. And this is where I, where in the demo at the start of this video, you saw I went into the menu for the actual emulator which I've got to, st to start off the second demonstration so this is where that would be displayed that menu and again if I'm not running on the Raspberry Pi Pico then it would just display it using the same core that I'm running everything else on right, so this is the display function and um, it just update it updates a frame of the display from the display memory uh, but this is the program which runs on the second core of the Raspberry Pi Pico so it's only running on the Raspberry Pi Pico this particular function uh, and so that's the function name that it runs and it's a uh, just a, a loop which keeps waiting for instructions so the first core in the program like you saw just above I will send this core instructions of when to actually do things like update the display. So if this first case statement is if I, in the code above, tell it to actually display the emulator menu, then it goes through the displaying the emulator menu. Uh, and then it sends a message back to the core above to say, okay, I've finished. So it doesn't actually need to necessarily run this on the second core because it, the first core is going to, wait for this to finish before it returns but the reason i've got it on the second core is that if i'm putting the display stuff on the second uh, core I might as well put all the display stuff on the second core and the reason for that is that there can be contention on memory access if you're if i'm accessing the main excuse me the display memory on the second core i may as well do all those functions there because if i otherwise if i split the display access between the two cores then if they try and just access the display at the same time, then they you can get like locks on, on reading them right into that same memory. So just to avoid any kind of contention like that, I just put all the display stuff on the second core. And then this is the second case that I have. So there's only two things which I can ask it to do. One is just to display the menu. And the second one is just to update a frame from the Jupyter Ace memory, emulated memory, onto the display, and that's all it does. So the, the code doesn't do much anyway, and so uh, but all I've had to do is separate out the display stuff into a second core so that the performance of the actual emulation is, is reasonably good.